Hi everyone! In this video, I will be discussing which option is better, the K-1 fiancé visa or the CR-1 spouse visa. And so we know that this is probably the number one question for couples who are beginning their immigration journey is uh, which path should I choose, the uh, K-1 fiancé visa or the CR-1 uh, visa? So if, if you're watching this video and you're just beginning your immigration journey, you're asking the right questions and stay tuned because I will be uh, digging into um, which option is better and helping you to get clarity on which option uh, will be best for you. And so before I jump in uh, to, uh, to our topic, I'd like to introduce myself and our firm. I'm attorney Megan Pastrana from Corrado Pastrana, uh, the immigration firm for couples. And just as it sounds, our firm is dedicated exclusively to assisting couples and navigating the immigration process. From uh, fiancé visas and counselor processing to adjustment of status, removal of conditions, and naturalization. And everyone in our office, basically everyone in our office has either gone through an immigration case personally or with their spouse. And so we know how stressful and how uh, grueling the immigration uh, process can be and how, um, how overwhelming it can be when you first get started um, to decide which option is best and which path to choose. And, and so our firm loves to provide educational materials to uh, equip you with the information that you need uh, to make the best decisions for you. We have uh, free educational materials and resources on our website immigration for couples. Uh, on our website, we also have a free mini course regarding uh, relationship evidence. And our firm also has a Facebook group called Immigration for Couples. I'll put the link below. We'd love to have you join us. We have uh, our attorneys have weekly live chats where we provide you with updates regarding what's happening in the world of immigration as it relates to couples. And so now let's jump into our topic which option is better, the K-1 uh, fiancé visa or the CR-1 spouse visa? And so if, if you find that this topic and the information in this video is helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up so YouTube will share it with other couples who are, are facing the same questions uh, that you are. So uh, thanks in advance for the thumbs up. All right, so to help you really understand which option is better, the K-1 uh, fiancé visa and the CR-1 spouse visa, it's really important to understand there isn't um, one, a one-size-fits-all uh, uh, option or, or uh, there's not a, a best option for everyone. The, really, the, dis the option between a K-1 fiancé visa and the CR-1 spouse visa is going to depend a lot on your particular situation, the facts of your case, um, and, and your, your goals and your relationship as to which option will be best. And so I'd like to break down the eligibility requirements for the K-1 fiancé visa and the CR-1 spouse visa. And then I want to do a side-by-side a -side list, basically, of the pros and cons of each option. So you can really get clarity about why, um, why someone would choose a fiancé visa or why someone would choose a CR-1 spouse visa. Um, and get some clarity, of course, uh, most importantly for yourself about which option is going to be best for you. So eligibility for K-1 fiancé visa. Uh, the eligibility requirements is that the petitioner, that's the individual who is wanting to petition to bring their, their fiancé from another country to the United States. The petitioner has to be a United States citizen. So if you're a lawful permanent resident of the United States, you aren't able to petition to bring your fiance. You have to be a United States citizen. Uh, the other requirements are that um, both of you are legally free to marry, and that means that um, neither of you uh, is currently married, uh, or um, or if you've been married before, that you're that you're divorced. And then the other requirement is that you are prepared and you're ready to marry each other. Um, once your your fiance receives the uh, fiance visa, you also have to show immigration that you've met in person in the past uh, in the past two years of filing your application. So within two years of filing your application, and um, there are some some limited circumstances in which you aren't required to meet in person, but that's uh, 
very, very limited. It's um, if there's some kind of extreme hardship or a cultural or religious reason that you can't meet in person. But for a majority, uh, a large majority of fiance visa applicants, you have to have met in person in the two years prior, uh, within the two years of filing your application. Um, and you also have to show immigration that you have a real relationship based on love and not just to receive an immigration benefit. So that's a quick overview of the fiance visa requirements. Now uh, let's jump over to the CR1 spouse visa and go through those requirements. For the CR1 spouse visa, just as it sounds, you have to be, uh, it has to be your spouse. You have to be uh, married, legally married. Um, and you can actually be either a, a lawful permanent resident or a citizen to petition uh, for your spouse. And um, again, you have to show that you have a real relationship uh, based on love and not to receive an immigration benefit. So now that we've gotten all of the eligibility requirements out of the way, let's jump into doing a side-by-side -side of the pros and cons of uh, the fiance visa versus the SCR1 spouse visa. So for the fiance visa, um, as I mentioned, you have to be a United States citizen uh, to petition for your fiance. So for a lot of people, um, if, if you don't, if they don't realize that, or if, if they're a lawful permanent resident, they can't actually um, apply or petition for their fiance. So if, if that's your situation, um, that would eliminate that as an option. Or if you're eligible to naturalize, you know, you could go through the process to become a citizen and then petition um, for your fiance. Um, but I don't want to get too much in, in, into the weeds on that. But but that's one of the I guess you you could say um, things to think about uh, a pro uh, the pro in the pros and cons list is that you can't file um, a fiance visa petition if you're not a United States uh, citizen. And so then then the option would be the spouse visa if you're a lawful permanent resident. The other um, the other pro uh, between the fiance visa and counselor processing is that historically. Uh, the fiancé visa K-1 has been the fastest option for couples to be able to be together. Now, uh, this is 2020 and COVID has unfortunately happened to our world. It's really shaken up the world of immigration and caused significant delays. Uh, so it's not, it's not entirely uh, true or clear um, if the fiancé visa is still going to be the fastest option. Um, but what I can tell you is that historically one of the, the pros um, one of the benefits of the fiancé visa is that the couple could be together um, faster. Um, and then uh, the other thing, the other um, benefit of the fiancé visa versus uh, counselor processing is, is relating to children. And so with the fiancé visa, if the immigrant, um, if the immigrant fiancé has children, and, and wants to bring those children on, on, the, um, on a fiancé visa or with the fiancé visa application, those children can be included on the application so long as they're not more than 21 years old. So this is a huge point that we go over with, with clients when they're first consulting is whether or not there's any children on the application. Because if there are children, um, sometimes the fiancé visa would actually be the, the better option because the uh, CR1 spouse visa um, only children who are under the age of 18 at the time of the spouses got married uh, can be part of the petition. There, there'd have to be a separate petition filed. But if, if the couple has gotten married or has ha or have plans rather, have plans to get married and they have children that are over the age of 18, we highly encourage people to um, consider the, the K-1 fiance visa because that would really be um, the fastest option um, or the only option to be able to bring those children that are over the age of 18 but under the age of 21. So children is another, being able to bring children under the age of 21 is another benefit of the, um, of the fiancé visa. And then in terms of some of the benefits of the CR1 spouse visa, the CR1 spouse visa, while it has historically been a longer process, the uh, the immigration fees for the CR1 visa are, are significantly less. Uh, typically, that's not, um, of course, um, finances or uh, finances and expenses for the immigration case are huge. But typically, um, typically when couples are making a decision with, re with regards to which option they want, 
um, the difference between the government fees isn't um, has not typically been something so significant that a person would choose the CR1 over the fiance visa, but all the same, we want you to know that the CR1 uh, spouse visa uh, has lower government fees overall than the fiance visa. The other benefit um, that people choose the CR1 spouse visa over the fiance visa is that the um, CR1 spouse visa, the, the spouse will actually enter the United States as a lawful permanent resident uh, green card holder. So the spouse will enter the United States, they'll receive their green card and social security card in the mail, and they can basically hit the ground running with, with their life. Whereas with the fiance visa, uh, the, the fiance, the immigrant fiance will be coming with a fiance visa, and then you'll have to get married within 90 days. And there's still another step after you get here to uh, receive your green card. And so, so when couples are making a decision about which option is best, sometimes they decide even though the CR1 spouse visa is historically a longer process, that the benefit of knowing that the spouse will come um, into the United States as a lawful permanent resident green card holder without the need to have to complete another step for your green card is something that is a, is a benefit. And so for the fiance visa, like I mentioned, you'll enter the United States on your fiance visa, and then you'll have to com still complete a process for your green card. You'll, you'll have to mail in a whole nother application, um, and then it takes on average, uh, and this is just an estimate, um, between four to six months before you can receive your work permit and social security card. So for a lot of individuals who are considering um, putting, uh, having both, both things um, and, and, and balance which, thing is, which option is better for them, uh, the consideration of uh, the fiance entering the United States and kind of being in this period of limbo for four to six months waiting for a work permit and a social security card is a huge consideration. Um, and so of course, once your fiance is here and you're waiting during that time, your fiance is in lawful status, but without a work permit um, and a social security card, you're not able to have a driver's license and work um, and be able to be fully integrated into the US. So that's, that's, that's a difficult um, aspect of the fiance visa. And that's why some individuals choose, okay, yeah, we're going to be apart um, longer um, for the, the CR1 spouse visa. Um, but the, the knowing that uh, my spouse will enter as a green card holder without this additional step after the wedding um, is, is, for some people is a benefit. And so those are really um, those are really the main the main um, pros and cons of, of of each option, and the things that you can kind of put in uh, put in your list of, of of what things that you're really wanting um, in in your relationship and in your immigration journey. What things are most important to you, rather? Um, and I know that it's extremely overwhelming to have to make a decision between the two options, but hopefully. This information is giving you some insight in, into some of the main um, the main benefits and drawbacks of, of each option to kind of help you decide which option is best for you. Um, again, please feel free to check out the educational materials on our website. We really get into even um, more detail about uh, the immigration options that are available to you. If you're just starting out on your immigration journey and you're looking for assistance with your case, we would love to help you. We have the link below to schedule a consultation with one of our attorneys, or you can book a consultation 24 seven on our website, Immigration for Couples. Our, our appointments actually come with a, a mini course uh, regarding the uh, various options uh, for individuals who are going through a couple-based immigration case. So we wanna make sure that you have even more information before the appointment. Um, and then during our strategy appointment, we can really walk you through any other doubts or, or concerns you have and help you to pick the best strategy and, and the next steps um, for you so you can hit the ground running with your immigration case and be one step closer <laughs> to being able to be together and start your lives in the United States. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks.